Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh One, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today, we continue with part two of the Nurgle series. So let's get into 40 Facts About the Chaos God Nurgle. Nurgle is the mighty lord of decay who presides over all physical corruption in creation, disease, and putrefaction. The inevitable entropy decline of all things are the favors he bestows upon the universe. Despite his horrific appearance, Nurgle is a warm, welcoming god who prides himself on the achievements of his followers, gifting them with his own hideous diseases even as he protects them from all pain and cold sleep of death. The fear of death can be found in the heart of all sentient beings of the universe, and so there is no shortage of mortals of every species present in the galaxy willing to sacrifice their immortal souls in the return for the corrupted preservation of their physical bodies for all time. Many of Nurgle's followers worship him by no choice of their own, the taint of Nurgle spreading readily amongst beasts and humanoids alike. The awful arcane illness known as Nurgle's rot may strike even the strongest person and cause him or her to be outcasted as a leper. Nurgle takes an interest in the victims of the diseases he unleashes, caring for them in a manner similar to a loving grandfather for which reason he is frequently referred to as Grandfather Nurgle by his servants. On some occasions, Nurgle's embrace is desired by his would-be followers, and so causes some that would have otherwise never been infected to seek out the disease and even poison themselves to earn his favor. It is their belief that those who die, caught in the grip of one of Nurgle's terrible diseases, are swept directly into his realm. Those that sing the praises of Nurgle loud enough are sometimes spared so that they could spread their blessing further, becoming his champion. Those that fashion themselves champion of Nurgle represent a dire threat to densely populated worlds, where close packed populations are vulnerable to a single contagion. Ships in the void are particularly vulnerable to the disease and many dying crew have called upon the Lord of Decay for his mercy, after his champions have spread Nurgle's rot throughout the ship. Such was the fate of the Death Guard Space Marine Legion when it became marooned in the warp on the long journey to Terra during the Horus Heresy. While they lay becalmed in the Immaterium, a mysterious contagion spread from one to another of the Death Guard's void ships until the entire fleet was infected. Even the reinforced physiology of the Space Marines could not fight off the dire plague as it bloated the guts, distended the flesh, and rotted its victims from the inside. It is said that when even the Legion's Primarch, Mortarion, fell victim to the plague, he cried out to the ruinous powers of chaos in his Deliberum. His desperation to save himself and his legion called forth Nurgle, and Mortarion became his greatest champion. These Chaos Space Marines became known as the Plague Marines, his most potent mortal servants. Thus, the Death Guard Legion has enjoyed the favor of Nurgle for the last 10,000 standard years. To get more info on these guys, please check out our 40 Facts video on the Death Guard. Nurgle is the age-old enemy of the Chaos God Zinch the Lord of Change. Their energies come from dynamically opposite beliefs. Zinch's power derives from hope and changing fortune, while Nurgle's comes from the defiance born out of desire and hopelessness. The followers of Nurgle often pit themselves against those of Zinch in complex political intrigues in the mortal realm, forever attempting to mirror his schemes for change is dull-minded self-interests. Nurgle and Zinch are in many ways diametrically opposed, for at the heart of the matter the changer of ways seeks to build even more complex and improbable webs of power, while Nurgle embodies continuous growth, destruction, and renewal. The Garden of Nurgle is no ordinary garden. Perhaps it is not a garden at all, but the mortal minds that contemplate the manifested will of the Lord of Decay must attempt to make some sort of sense out of what they have seen or heard about in whispered tales. The same tomes that other forbidden texts have attempted to describe the Lord of the Land himself 
have for the most part agreed that the idea of Nurgle's realm is being a perverse, deadly, and yet strangely beautiful garden best put chaos into terms they can fathom. Like a normal garden, the domain of Nurgle is home to a bewildering array of flora and fauna, all interconnected and supporting the whole. Beds of bright blue shovel petal plants dig themselves up and leave the dirt in which they grew so that the plague bearers can plant new skull seeds in the rich looms. As the skull seeds grow and blossom, they attract bounding, stomping chaos beasts that mistake their fruit for the head of new playthings. This scatters their matter violently into the air where it comes to rest on the wings of huge flies. Slowed by the sticky lump of the splattered plants, these insects become easy prey for other flying creatures that ingest them as they soar through the rot-filled air. Unbeknownst to the predators, bloated flies are carriers of many of Nurgle's experimental diseases and other creations. With their innards thus infected, these predators sicken, vomiting the content of their guts all across the garden as they fly about and eventually explode in showers of life-giving flesh and blood. The bounty of mutated and mutilated tissue fall into the new areas of the garden beneath, decaying into a compost and starting the cycle of life and death anew. A visitor in this bizarre and perilous realm doesn't walk from this place to that. He experiences what needs to be experienced. Even the demons that tend the garden are not really what might be thought of as a workforce that arrive at a place, does a job, and then leaves for other regions. These demons are a part of the experience of the garden itself. This is especially troublesome for the plague bearers, who metamorphous minds were once mortal and still strive to impose a sense of reality in this unreal existence. A visitor of Nurgle's realm would find a dizzying amount of diversity of experiences. Here he might find trees made of nothing but the flesh of Eldar, constantly oozing the tears of a dying race. There is no telling what wonders await around each bend in the path that stretches and winds throughout the garden, but any who encounter them will surely have their sanity tested and questioned, should they survive to share the tale. The Garden of Nurgle is an ever-changing realm, shifting according to the needs and whims of its master. Many areas exist only temporarily, taking shape to allow him to indulge a particular fancy, or to be granted to an especially accomplished great unclean one as a reward. The legends hint that some aspects of this domain remain relatively constant. Nurgle has need of fields in which to plant his crops, or blighten herbs pits to hold the bodies upon which he conducted his experiments. Most important of all, a gigantic and decrepit mansion in which to store his creations, brew his legendary contagions, entertain guests, and plot the course of the great corruption. Judging from amidst the primordial mulch in Nurgle's home, decrepit and ancient yet eternally strong at its foundation, the mansion is an electric structure of rotten timber and broken walls overgrown with crawling poison ivy and thick moss. Within these tumbling walls, Nurgle toils beneath mildewed and sagging beams. The great god works for eternity at a rusted cauldron, vast enough to contain all the oceans of the world. Churning and murmuring to himself, Nurgle labors to create contagions and pestilences, the most sublime and unfeeded forms of life. With every stir of Nurgle's maggot-riddled ladle, a dozen fresh diseases flourish and are scattered throughout the stars. From time to time, Nurgle reaches down with a clawed hand to scoop a portion of the ghastly mixture into his cavernous mouth, tasting the fruits of his labor. With each passing day, he comes closer to brewing his perfect disease, a spiritual plague that will spread across the extent of the universe and see all living things gather onto its rotting embrace. Dwarfed by their mighty lord, a host of plague bearers are gathered about Nurgle, each chanting, keeping count of the diseases created, the mischievous Nurglings that have hatched, and the souls claimed by the Lord of Decay. When Nurgle's diseases wax strong in the mortal realm, his garden blooms with death heads and fresh filth, encroaching upon the lands of other chaos gods. 
War follows as Nurgle's adversaries fight back. The Plaguebearers take up arms to defend the morbid forest. From such wars spring more of the richness of life and death, of triumph over diversity. Though Nurgle's realm will eventually recede again, it will have fed deeply on the fallen and will lie in peace until it is ready to swell throughout time and space once more. And those were 40 facts about the Chaos God Nurgle. His realm within the warp seems pretty cool. Seems like a place you could like walk around in and then get eaten by a giant mutated plant. Uh, kind of disgusting. Uh, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel to get part 3. We're also going to be talking about other Chaos Gods later on, so please subscribe to the channel. If you've already subscribed, you're awesome. Thank you for liking, commenting, and sharing. And don't forget to go to uh, yesterday's video and post uh, what type of uh, video you guys want to see for next week, because we post every single day if you did not know. Thank you so much for listening. This was Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate, signing out. Oh,